We know Rudyard Kipling as a guy who was, um, wrote the Jungle Book. Wrote great stories. We don't know Rudyard Kipling for the one thing that he did that I think is the most important thing. When it all is said and done, Rudyard Kipling probably would have said, this is it. This is why I live my life. He lived in England right during the First World War. And he saw the craziness that is happening again today. He saw the Fabian socialist movement where people start to go dead inside. They start to worship the market, and then they start on this grand uh, experiment of, of, of socialized everything, of discounting the individual, and it spirals out of control. And so he decided to leave a marker because he lost his son, he lost his wife, and he watched millions die so somebody could remold the world closer to their heart's desire. And he wrote a poem. It's called The Gods of the Copybook Headings. Copybook headings, copybooks are what we used to have in school where we would, if it was be an A up here, you would, you would write an A. But they used to have things like God is good, fire will burn, water will wet. And you would write water would wet, water would wet, water would wet. But the Fabian socialists in England started to change those things because those were truths, and they started to change the truths that are being changed now. Our founders said, we hold these truths to be self-evident. They're actually saying, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, life, I have a right to live. Liberty, you can't just come and scoop me up in the middle of the night. You can't just come take my house and to pursue happiness, to make my own way. In America, they're now saying, in the New York Times, actually arguing that those things are not self-evident. That's just the best thing we could come up with at the time. In America, he saw it happen. And he knew it would happen again because history always repeats itself. And so he wrote, As I pass through my incarnations in every age and race, I make my proper prostrations to the gods of the marketplace. Peering through reverent fingers, I watch them flourish and fall. And the gods of the copybook headings, I notice, outlast them all. We were living in the trees when they met us. They showed us each in turn that water will certainly wet us and fire will certainly burn. But we found them lacking in uplift, vision, and breadth of mind. So we left them to teach the gorillas while we followed the march of mankind. We moved as the spirit listed. They never altered their pace being neither cloud nor wind-borne like the gods of the marketplace. But they always caught up with our progress, and presently word would come that a tribe had been wiped off its ice field or the lights had gone out in Rome. With the hopes that our world is built on, that they were utterly out of touch, I mean, they denied that the moon was Stilton. They denied she was even Dutch. They denied that wishes were horses. They denied that pigs had wings. So we worshiped the gods of the market who promised us all of these beautiful things. When the Cambrian measures were forming, they promised us perpetual peace. They swore if we just gave them our weapons, that the wars of the tribes would cease. But when we disarmed, they sold us and delivered us bound to our foe. And the gods of the copybook heading said, Stick to the devil you know. On the first feminine sandstones, we were promised a fuller life, which started out by loving our, later, our neighbor and ended up loving his wife. Till all of our women had no more children, and the men had lost their reason and faith. And the gods of the copybook heading said, the wages of sin is death. 
in the Carboniferous epic, epic, we were promised abundance for all by robbing selected Peter to pay for selective Paul. But though we had plenty of money, there was nothing our money could buy. And the gods of the copybook heading said, if you do not work, you shall die. Then the gods of the market tumbled, and their smooth tongue wizards withdrew, and the hearts of the meanest were humbled, and began to believe that it was true, that all is not gold that glitters, and two and two do make four. And the gods of the copybook headings limped up to explain it once more as it will be in the future. It was at the birth of man. There were only four things that are certain since social progress began. That the dog returns to his vomit and the sow returns to her mire and the burnt fool's bandaged finger goes wobbling back to the fire. And after all of this is accomplished, and the brave new world begins when all men are paid for existing and no man must pay for his sins. As surely as water will wet us, as surely as fire will burn, the gods of the copybook headings with terror and slaughter return. This was the most important work I can this man ever did. He wrote it down. Remember and teach it to your children.